So we got, uh, is it Caesar in Queens? Yeah, hello. Uh, How you doing, Caesar? Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Uh, um, <clears throat> I have, um, uh, I totally believe that you need evidence. You know, when you believe something, you need evidence to support it. Cool. Not just blind faith. And, um, and I, I presented a small list of reasons why I believe in God. Okay. And <clears throat> I'd like to read it out uh, real quick. Okay. All right. Um, there's Jesus Christ, the near-death experience, the finely tuned universe, the intelligent design for explaining the origins of life. I believe life comes from life only. Information can only come from a mind, not from matter. Um, I believe chaos can exist in order, but order can't uh, exist in chaos. I believe in the uh, out-of-body experience and uh, mediums and uh, electronic voice phenomenon. Is ABT. there anything you don't believe in? Yeah, I mean, no, a, when are we going to get to I aliens mean, and Bigfoot? No, no, no. I mean, these are because collect. because because you 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 gave a list of of, of the reasons that you mm -hmm. claim you believe in God, and all you did was list a bunch of stuff you believe in. They, they yeah. collaborate towards God. Well, well okay. but you listed a bunch of stuff that you believe in, uh -huh. uh, and guess what? I don't believe in any of those. Why should I? No, I know. But, yeah, but uh, see, why? And why do you believe in those things? Look, the O.J. Simpson, the the the. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous. Sorry, guys. It's okay. Yeah, it's it's okay. The Tell jury you what. didn't believe he was guilty. I mean, the whole world basically did. But I know, and and I have more. I have more of these little things. But it's for many reasons why I believe in God. It's not just one reason. But see, I you, understand your, your reasons mm -hmm. themselves need to be justified with some evidence. If yeah. you say you believe in out-of-body experience, you mm -hmm. need to be able to explain why. And you, if you say that you believe in you know, creationism, you need to be able to explain why. You mm -hmm. need to be able to lay out a sort of path of evidence that got you to accepting that those claims are true. And if you can't do that, Mm -hmm. then what you've got is a, is a belief that is founded uh, on an uh, irrational basis, and mm -hmm. you should probably, you know, reevaluate. And you should think, well, it, it, am I just believing these things because they sound good to me, or they, they seem to reinforce what I want to believe about the universe, rather than what any sort of evidence or proof actually shows? I mean, you, you need to understand why you believe what you believe. You need to be able to have a method that you can lay out for yourself and, that and allows you to tell the difference between a claim that's true and a uh, claim that's false. So, so let, yeah, me, let, me, let, me ask, let me ask this real quick, Caesar. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, my mic's not working quite right. Just take, just take one off the list, for example, okay. like near-death experiences. Mm -hmm. Near-death experiences have been investigated and we've mm -hmm. found no evidence that any real phenomena is actually occurring. Basically, what the best guess is that we're talking about a dying brain. We know, you know, we know what happens to your brain when it's like starved of oxygen for a little while. Mm -hmm. We know what happens when a brain uh, is in the process of decay. And now you're talking about a brain that's actually dying. And mm -hmm. of course, we're gonna, I would, it would be unreasonable not to expect some weird experiences. But when we actually test near-death experiences, um, we find that they don't pass the test. The, the same out of body experiences, etc. It's really easy. Put a put a number on top of the cabinet, a digital display with a number, so mm -hmm. that if you actually leave your body, you should be able to tell me what number is up on that digital display. And when we do tests like that, it fails every time. So uh, is it wait. more likely mm -hmm. that this is a phenom that there's, that there's no real phenomena here uh, in the manner that they're speaking, and instead we're just talking about brains fantasizing and putting together pieces. In the, way, in the same way that we build memories, our memories are incredibly uh, fallible. And so you've got a brain that is in an abnormal state, mm -hmm. and when you, when, you, when you are revived, you come to, and you start feeling normal, your brain is trying to piece together memories of what happened when it was working right and when it was working wrong. Why, why yeah, do you think there's something supernatural behind that? I've got a few things to say about that. First sure. of all, I'm not aware of any test where they actually that's, induce... That's the problem. That, so I'm not aware, where are these tests you're talking about? I mean, you're talking about these tests where they put up a, a sign on top of the roof or whatever. I'd like to know where are these tests taking place at. Sure, and, and you can start searching the Internet at a million different skeptical... Wait a minute, you personally don't know? I don't have every study memorized. If that's a problem no, for you, I'm very, very sorry. 
But uh, if you, I think, I think it's incredibly dishonest of you when I point out the fact that, that there are studies and that you can go look at these, and I'll be happy to look some up and give you an email, if you send an email address, uh, and email them back to you. But if, you're, if your objection is that I don't have these memorized off the top of my head, that's not my problem. No, it's not my problem that you are unaware of things that are real while believing things that aren't. No, 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 that's not my argument. I was saying that I'm not expecting you to have detailed information of every test. I'm just saying because I'm aware of these claims. A lot of scientists make these uh, false claims that they, that they, they debunk. Like who? Thing. Like who? Who's, what scientist has made a false claim about out-of-body experiences? Like, like, well, you don't expect me to have all the details. Well, you? I mean, again, I mean, no, you're making, you're making a claim that's saying I'm, out I'm of, not, you I'm should not expecting know. a Matt to have the details either. I'm, I'm fully aware that there's these scientists that do these tests. Okay, you just said you're fully aware. So which of the scientists have made false claims? Well, I'm trying to get you. You've now made I a want, claim. I want to make sure. I want to make sure that we're fair. You're saying that you are aware of scientists who have made claims and that these claims mm -hmm. are false. Mm -hmm. How do you know that their claims are false? Because uh, by the nature of the tests they've done, you go into the details of how they conducted these tests, and you see that they're they're improper. That how, they've done how, it. how are they improper? Well, give me an example of an well, improper test. Well, first of all, like they have in one in one hospital in America, just one hospital, they have a a, a sign on top of a of a in the ceiling of the room where a lot of patients die in heart attack, natural causes. And out of that one little exam, they haven't found a person who had a near death experience. I mean, in one. So you're in, basically saying. Saying that you've come across this one of the studies that I was talking about, mm -hmm. and you're claiming that it's that it's false because they they're made, that's such a narrow net. How can no, you no, 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 no. I said there were studies. You wanted mm -hmm. me to cite one, and now you're saying you knew about one. You just don't believe it, and you don't think that the protocol is good because it's too narrow. No, well, that's guess, not... hang on, Caesar. Guess mm -hmm. what? That's too damn bad. Really? If, there, if, the, if the test does not produce evidence, then you don't have evidence for the claim. And until you actually come up with evidence for the claim, a test that does pass, there's nothing wrong with this test. And I guarantee you that if one person had had an out-of-body experience there and mentioned that sign, you would not be claiming that this test is in any way faulty. That is dishonest. It demonstrates the bias. It's a confirmation bias. You are looking for the information that confirms the nonsense that you already believe, and you are rejecting the information that challenges what you already believe. That is not an honest assessment of a claim. No, there's a reason why I don't believe. I, the test itself it can work. The reason why it hasn't produced anything is because it's so narrow. You might have to wait years, decades, centuries. But there's only one room in one hospital in the entire but country. But if it's an out-of-body experience, then it still should work, right? I mean, a person should be able to float around time, Well, who knows when? 10, 20, 50, 100 years? And you know so what? So now what you're doing is a fallacy called moving the goalposts, right? It's now you, oh you, you, get a, you, get a, you get a study that doesn't give you the results you want, and now you're saying, oh, well, we're going to have to study this for centuries no, no, before. No, no, the thing is, See? that's why the test... Uh, I feel like the test is proper because no, you have to do Caesar, it the test the test is proper. Your objection is that they're not doing it in enough places, but you don't know how many places they're doing it. You have no idea how often this is being Neither done. Neither do you. And, I'm yet, just saying. Well, and it doesn't matter because if it takes a million years before we get a result, then it takes a million years before the claim is believable. If you believe it before then, you are being irrational. You are accepting something without evidence, which is by definition irrational. And, and that is just one tiny aspect of the near-death experience. There's a whole lot of it I could get into. Well, anyway, um, you, were, you were wanting an example of a study. I just pulled one up right here. You can find I know, this, but that's you know, just one, one criticism. And, and there's a whole body of work in near-death experience. Using like, virtual reality goggles, a, a camera, and a stick, scientists have induced out-of-body experiences, the sensation of drifting outside one's own body in healthy people. Uh, and this is uh, published in the journal yeah, Science in 2007. Okay. When people gaze at an illusory image of themselves through mm -hmm. the goggles mm -hmm. and are prodded in just the right way with the stick, they feel as if they have left their bodies. This would seem to demonstrate that what people call out-of-body experiences is a neurological phenomenon, not a supernatural one. The and research you know what, reveals you know that the sense of having that? a body, of being mm -hmm. in a bodily self, is actually constructed from multiple sensory streams. And, so, and you know what contradicts that evidence you just told me? What? 
is that when a when a dying when a brain is dying, it's it's starved of oxygen. It's not even it's not working properly. You're not even supposed to have any hallucinations or dreams. That's a how do you know that? How do you know that? Have you ever died? What are you no. saying? Are you, are you, are you an expert now that you you know you're not supposed to have hallucinations or dreams when a brain's dying? When you, you when can, actually you can that's have exactly what nonsense. We're when a brain is breaking down, you can have random nonsense that doesn't make any sense. That you could be seeing colors and yet and, and yet you're noises. convinced and yet you're convinced that when this brain completely breaks down, everything repairs itself as the soul goes off with the memories that, sh that are gone. And that, no, it doesn't repair itself. It's not broken. It's dying. It's not broken. Okay. It's still... Wait, if it's dying, it's not broken? So That's... it starts yeah. working again it's afterwards? Not, I mean, like, uh, yeah, I think you need to reevaluate. I, I tell you what, Caesar, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Yeah. I really am. Side, you, know. you make a list of things that you believe, and when we point out uh, reasonable objections to him. You've, right. you, you've got you've got a, com a complaint for okay. everything. Okay, and I got yeah. two. And I got two reasons why I'm not an atheist. I haven't gotten to that part yet. Um, I got one reason you're not an atheist, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, atheism makes no positive arguments sure. for so what? Yeah. reality. So, so what? Yeah. What, what difference right. does that make? All right. And the other reason is science makes no claims for a godless reality. So then I'm asking, I'm asking you or anybody really, why should I be a, 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 an atheist when I can be an, when I can be a, a, a Catholic or a Christian or whatever? Sure. Why, why should you be a Catholic instead of a Muslim? Why, why, why should you be a Catholic? That's a genetic and, fallacy. Don't go there. I'm yeah. well aware of these arguments. I'm not talking yeah. about the genetic fallacy, and don't tell me not to go there. I'm asking a question. Mm -hmm. Because okay. I was born in America. I, you want to know? You right. want to know so, why? So you want to know? You, you want to know why you should be an atheist and not a Catholic? And my answer is because there's not sufficient evidence to believe Catholicism is true. And, and if you not, care at all about whether or not what you believe is true, you cannot reasonably be a Catholic or anything else. And that's right. the end of the show. We're out of time. I apologize. There's Liz List to the crew. Thanks to Martin. Thanks Hello, to Dave Silverman for calling in. Remember the American Atheist Convention, and there'll be people at dinner at El Arroyo shortly. Bye bye. Caesar and I believe everything I hear. Mm.